relationship also has to have vision. If you're going to build it by design as opposed to time, you're going to need to, to know where you want this relationship to be. And you need to know how it's going to be mutually beneficial. I mean, listen, this system delivers isn't for you to be scheming or to act. You need to be genuine. But at the same point in time, there's no harm in planning and being prepared. And in order to do that, you kind of have to have a vision of where you want the relationship to go. I know that most people meet so many people within a week and a month that it's impossible to put the time into to building relationships with everybody. Um, but I also know that everybody you meet could be a potential opportunity. So whether it's a janitor or a CEO, you really have to think about how you're going to build that relationship. And, and I have a system that I call it the three-bucket system. You know, I'm not a Ph.D., but it's simple for me, where every time I meet somebody, I get the business card, I review the business card, and right off the bat, I try to select one of the buckets to put it in. The first bucket is just, okay, I'm going to be considerate. I'm going to respond and send an email. Hey, very nice to meet you. Hopefully there's something we can work on together in the future. Boom. And I put it in bucket one, and I probably don't pay attention to it uh, unless there's something that, that arises that I think there's some synergies. Then there's bucket number two. Hmm. There could be some potential with this person. I'm not quite sure, but, hey, dear Joe, very nice to meet you. I'd love to follow up and see if there's ways we can work together. And then finally, bucket number three is the ching-ching. You know, these people, there's definitely synergies. I know there's synergies, and I want to get out there and, and get a meeting with these folks. The biggest problem is when you're meeting folks, at times there's dollar signs on their heads. Can't, what can they do for me? How can they be helpful? And, and if you look at it solely that way, you're going to squander relationships. So in order to build them, you need to make sure you have vision on where you want it to be and treat everybody you meet as a potential. When you're building relationships, I'm going to give you a bonus E here. You have to entertain and engage. Let's start with engagement. You have to constantly keep in touch because you want to be top of mind with folks. You want people to think of you first when it comes to whatever you do and, and how you can work together. If people are thinking of you first, the likelihood is you're going to do business and make money. So make sure that you're constantly engaging with folks, whether it be text, DM, handwritten notes, phone calls. The mechanism doesn't matter. What has to happen is you have to have a system to make sure that you're following up with people and they know you're, you're, you're around and, and uh, you're ready to do business and help them out if you can. Social media is a great opportunity to do this on many levels because now through LinkedIn and Facebook and, and Twitter and other mechanisms, Instagram, when you're connected to people and you're doing updates, uh, they start thinking about you just through your updates. So if you're not heavily active in social media, which all of you probably are, it just gives you another reason that you should be. The second E is entertain. You really, when you're building unbreakable relationships, you need to create memorable moments so people always remember you and never forget you. It's, it's crucial. We were really good at, at it at the Patriots. We would invite people to the games and bring them up to our suite, and we'd uh, have a nice mixture, prospects, current clients, maybe a celebrity or an athlete or two, and we'd have a little food and a little drink. And then there'd be a certain time pregame that we brought everybody downfield, and, and there'd be the opportunity to watch warm-ups, and, and we'd be chatting while we're watching warm-ups taking note of the conversations and knowing everything we were talking about, investing time in them. And there'd be pictures taken, and Mr. Kraft, the owner of the team, would come down, and he'd talk and take pictures with folks. But then there was always one CEO who we really wanted to impress, and I'd go over to him and I'd say, hey, John, you know, we don't do this for everybody, but come with me. And I'd walk him, if you look down the sideline here on the screen, and where the players are running out, and there's 
there's a guy with a trench coat there. I'd walk him to that spot over there. And the players would be in there getting ready to run out. And they'd be jumping up and down, whacking each other's on the shoulder pads. We're going to win this game. We're going to get win this game. Come on, come on, come on. And they'd be, you know, getting really excited and pumped up. You know, they're going out to battle. They're going out to war. So these, these players really had to, you know, get jacked up prior to the game. It's probably good for, you know, I, I try to get jacked up for this, this webinar today. I listened to a little ACDC beforehand, so that got me in the mood. But anyway, the players are jumping up and down, and this CEO, his head's bobbing up and down, and he's looking at him. He's like a little kid. And then Ozzy Osbourne comes on, and the music screams out, all aboard, and the music's playing, and the fans are screaming, and the players are running out, and they're high-fiving John, and, and they're whacking him on the tush, and he's jumping up, and he's like goosebumps on goosebumps. Memorable moment. That's a memorable moment. John was night right next to me. Pictures were taken. I sent him a picture. And on his desk, he always has that memory of being in the helmet, being with the players, high-fiving them, and I'm right there next to him. I think we'd all, would all agree, a pretty powerful, memorable moment. Now, I know, you're sitting there looking at the computer, and you're saying to yourself, But, Lou, we don't have a big inflatable helmet. And you're right, but I'm here to tell you that creating memorable moments is not about magnitude. It's about attitude. My dad was a pharmaceutical salesman, and he was one of the best relationship architects around. And he had to make uh, relationships with doctors and administrative people in doctors' offices uh, because he sold different types of drugs, legally, by the way. But he's a pharmaceutical rep, and he'd walk in, and uh, he tried to do business with them and make relationships with the receptionist. And, and some days he'd get a new product, and he'd call up and say, hey, Sally, how are you today? You know, we have this new, uh, this, this new uh, Cipro that just came out, and I want to come in, and I want to show it to the docs. And Sally would say, Lou, you know, I'd love to see you. I'm sorry. Well, they just, they're so busy that they're not even going to be able to get out uh, for lunch today. And that was my father's cue. My father would go into the north end of Boston. He would get a tray of pasta. He would get antipasto. He would bring it up to the doctor's office. He would set it up in the, the conference room, put all the fixings out, and Sally would get on the intercom and say, Hey, everybody, Lou Imbriano from Eli Lilly is here, and he brought lunch. Now, all of them would come down. They'd be, they'd be eating, and my father would be behind, be behind the table serving them, on a day they weren't getting out some of the best food they ever had, my father right there, memorable moment. So it's not about the attitude. If you use your creativity, no matter what field you're in, you can create those moments where people are going to remember you and think of you first. And it's crucial in building relationships that people always think of you and call you and, and, and want you involved in the things that they're doing. 